Yeah, so Kagomarn is actually going to show you uh, live streaming of the, the traffic flows over the network uh, so that we can see what the impact is in real time as well. All right. Um, so I was told to speed up. So basically, I mean, my colleague just talked about a lot of the key aspects right, of the SD-WAN, the automation, the zero touch, right, the BIS policy. But that's also another aspect that uh, is important, right? Especially if you want to enable not only hybrid WAN, but also internet as a true enterprise WAN. So you need something that can adapt quickly to change in the underlying link. Uh, and that's why we have to build this uh, dynamic multi-path optimization to deal with all the change um, that can happen on the underlying link. And as a result, maintain the application performance that the user expects. Um, so in this demo, let me connect the screen. So we have a, a pretty simple setup, right? We have the traditional branch with the PC, and we have the VeloCloud branch, again, with the PC, and they both connect to the same two ISPs, right? And we use IPsec on the traditional branch to connect back to the data center. So for us, it goes through our cloud network and then uh, through IPsec into a data center. And we run a streaming video, which you guys see uh, on the screen here, right? It's a 720p high definition, uh, 30 frames per second. So very demanding on the network. And this is actually a live streaming, right? And we pay over RTP. Um, so right now, what you look at is the internet is fine, right? You, you see good quality over both screens because now both ISP are delivering good, good quality, right? But things can happen in the internet. So let's say ISP one start dropping packet Oh, you need to oh, switch to the right network. Sorry. I need to switch to the right network? Yeah. <laughs> and as you can see right now, right, we have the traffic running over the ISP one, which is Telepacific. Mm. Mm. So now I'm gonna cause some problem over the ISP one. So take a look at the screen over there. Mm. Right, so you see a quick glitch, right? Basically some pixelization, mm. but it quickly resolved because now we steer the packet over to an alternate <laughs> link. But then you look at the traditional WAN because it still used the routing protocol, keep sending packet over the ISP one, that is dropping packet. Right, so now we already steered the traffic over to ISP two, and which we can, we can quickly validate by looking at the orchestrator. Huh. Right, we already move it over. But if it ends just like that, right, it will be very easy. But what if both ISPs are having problem? So now both of them are dropping packets. Let me move back here. So now we have both links, right, both dropping packet. And this is when the forward error correction kicks in. We start sending packet, duplicating packet across both links, right, and pick up the first one that comes out. We try to maintain as good as possible the quality of experience for the application. And if you compare the two, I mean, this is unusable, right, in the traditional WAN. But with VeloCloud optimization, we can still make it fairly usable. Mm -hmm. Actually pretty good from what I can see. So the next thing that can also happen is, what if you have only one link? You lose one link, and now you end up with one bad link. So I'm going to disconnect one link. <coughs> So just disconnect ISP2, and let's see if it shows up on the orchestrator. 
this link goes back. Now we have one bad link. And this is where we start duplicating packet, doing forward error correction on one link to basically maintain the quality of the application. Right, so four things just happen. The links are good on both ISPs. One link goes back, we steer the packet. Both links go back, we start duplicating. We lost one link, we end up with one bad link. We do forward error correction on one link. And this is the end result of the application. So, so duplicating the, the packets uh, across one link is fine as long as you've got, you know, as long as you've got the headroom, as long as you're not yeah. nearing, nearing. It's absolutely you know, correct. So what happens, I mean, ha at what <coughs> point do you decide, okay, we can't do that any longer, and, and is, that, is that decision made intelligently so that you don't take a, a connection that's 70% loaded and, and make it 100% loaded <coughs> just simply because you're duplicating packets? Yeah, so whenever we're doing replication, we're constantly monitoring the queue depths in the system to make sure that we're not exacerbating the problem by making okay. traffic build up. So if traffic starts to slow down through the network because we're oversubscribing, we'll either first selectively try to turn off replication. So you may only want to replicate the video control stream, mm -hmm. but let the data packets go through. Eventually, we'll turn off replication entirely if there's not available bandwidth to do it. <clears throat> so I could, I could see this where you've got a you got a branch out in the middle of nowhere, one provider in the area, and they're not the greatest provider. And so I don't even, I don't even need to multiplex anything. I just need that forward error correction mm -hmm. so that the site's usable. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, error correction is one of the things we do, right? We also do jitter buffer, <laughs> so we detect jitter. Uh, on the line, we can smooth it out without jitter buffer. And we do have customer that, I mean, when we start a POC with them, we could not even hear them on the phone because they're in, in such a bad location. So once they put in the edge, they call back to us and then we can hear them pretty well. <laughs>